around the world. Brian Gilvari is the executive chair of the global chemical company Ineos, former chief financial officer of BP. He's now with me from London. The reality is really is grim from what we heard from the Bank of England today. And it's going to get worse. And, and I wonder for a large company like yours, how do you contain costs when your workers are going to turn around and say, we need higher wages to pay these extra inflationary prices? Well, look, you know, as Ineos, as a big global chemical company, we do our annual reviews. We look at where, where our workers are paid overall and then ensure that we continue to stay competitive. So that's just part of our annual review process. And look, everybody can see right now what's happening in terms of inflation in many of the countries and, and geographies where we operate. And the focus is to stay as efficient as possible and to ensure that we continue to create the products that our customers need. But it's interesting because we've just been you've just heard from the CEO of Kellogg's, which, of course, is a consumer based company in that sense, consumer packaged goods. Now we're talking to yourself on on much larger gas production and energy. Um, but the same pressures are forcing you. Yeah, no, look, actually what's happening is the question is, can you push on some of these energy prices further down the chain in terms of supply? And that's what we're seeing across the piece. Even as we emerged out of COVID, before we got into the situation with Russia and Ukraine, we were already seeing inflated costs inside the supply chain. And the degree that there is a short market right now for a lot of these products, those prices can be passed on. And you're seeing that with gas right now, particularly in Europe. Uh, that relies on 40% of its gas imports come from Russia, they are being curtailed. And I think what right. the issue is going to emerge as we go into this winter is if Europe can't get to 80% stocks, I think we have a major problem coming. Uh, and that's going to affect a lot of industry, particularly in Germany and then also in France and Italy. The, the idea of rationing, and we've already heard, I mean, you've already seen the EU introduce some rationing plans at 15%. Do you think, to some extent, this essentially gives Vladimir Putin, who's already got his foot on the neck of the European economy, great leverage until we, Europe weans itself off Russian gas? The ability for Russia to inflict greater economic damage is huge. Would you agree? Yeah, but then equally, it's very difficult for Europe to wean itself off gas without the infrastructure to allow it to import. Maybe just a very simple statistic. If you look at the amount of gas that uh, Europe currently takes uh, from Russia, about 72% mm -hmm. of that is via pipeline. So 72% of all pipeline gas into Europe is from Russia. You would need to increase LNG imports by about 150% to be able to replace that gas. So I don't think Europe's in a position to wean itself off Russian gas anytime soon. Equally, it would take already now five to six years to start to build regasification plants. But again, you'd have to be able to source that natural gas, and that is not readily available. If you look at gas reserves globally, um, over 50% of gas reserves in the world sit in Russia, they sit in Iran, another sanctioned country, and they sit inside Qatar. The ability to be able to move gas from other parts of the world into Europe is that much more complex. So I think this is a multi-decade solution if you're going to try and wean yourself off Russian gas. So for a company like yours, where does that leave you? Because at the moment, you're you're not crackered between the, you know, the inflationary rising spiral that's costing you more in your chemicals business, your oil and gas and the geopolitical aspects of Russia, Ukraine and the EU. Where does it put you? Oh, right now, for INEOS, it has limited impact. Remember, we're a producer of gas. So we have in our INEOS energy business uh, gas production out of the UK. We have some gas production out of Denmark and some oil production out of Denmark. And equally, we entered the ethane market some five years ago, seven years ago, in terms of transporting ethane from the United States to our crackers in Europe and around the world. So we've already repositioned the company to ensure that we have a more balanced portfolio of where we take our main feedstocks from, natural gas and ethane, uh, in terms of our cracker system. So we've already re-optimized, but we're going to obviously we'll see the inflationary pressures come through. And really, in terms of the company, the, the question is to the degree we can then move that on to 
our customers that require, as you said previously with your Kellogg's uh, conversation, the packaging that then gets pushed further down the supply chain that then drives inflation. As we look to winter, and I know that you're enjoying a, a very hot summer in, in London, so I don't want to sort of bring in the, the cold weather too quickly, but as we look to winter, are you optimistic or pessimistic? Oh, I think the outlook for the winter looks particularly... Um, there's a degree of trepidation around the winter right now. So if we come back to Europe, if, if you just look at gas prices, uh, gas prices in Europe are trading almost double what they are in the UK. UK does have a lot of LNG import capacity, but as we get into the winter, we'll start to draw down on those stocks quite significantly. You have a cold winter, then I think we see more pressure on prices, and particularly domestic prices. I think Europe's got a major problem in that right now, since Nord Stream 1 has been curtailed and is now only running at 20% of its capacity with no sign that the new compressor will be put in place. It's still sitting in somewhere inside Germany waiting for permits to move back into Russia. I think if, if, if Europe doesn't get back to 80% of its stocks coming into the winter and, and you know, we're down at 70, Europe is going to have an issue and it will have to curtail its energy sources uh, to different industries. It will have to start to think about how it prioritizes that. Right. Sir, we'll talk more as the year moves on and we discuss and we find out exactly where we stand. I'm grateful for your time tonight. Thank you, sir.